everyone tonight. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the um, integration services announcements that were made at Ignite um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and here's a few details about myself. I'll, I'll cover that a little bit when we get towards the end too. So I've broken them into um, a few different categories tonight. Um, basically, I've got the um, some general ones that I thought were interesting probably to everybody, uh, and then some specific ones about Azure Logic Apps um, and API management and the Azure functions. And then because my Twitter handle is BizTalkBill, I had to throw in a little bit of BizTalk Server at the end of it um, because they are doing something to make it easier to migrate the BizTalk Server to um, Azure. So for general ones, um, the one that a lot of people have been waiting for is that they're going to stand up availability zones in Australia East, which means that you can have um, their separate power, separate connectivity, uh, separate cooling, all of that inside of the Australia East data center. So you can have high availability inside of a single data center with that. Um, the other one that I wanted to have a little quick chat about is the app service. They're introducing some new P uh, V3s. Uh, you can see there's some, the, the V2s are out there now. Um, these have um, an increased memory footprint, so they look a lot better for some of the bigger things that people want to run. Um, and then they've also gone GA with the container support, so you can have an app service plan now that runs Windows, runs Linux, or runs the container that you've built and distributed to that. Um, and I've done that recently with a customer. It works, seems to work pretty well. They also have the app service environment um, version three. If you do need to run everything still in an app service environment inside of your VNet, uh, most people have actually moved over to a lot of the AKS stuff for that. The other thing they've announced is the Azure Communication Services. Um, this is going to be um, some telephony um, and um, SMS, things like that. At the moment, it is all still based in the US, so, and I haven't heard anything on when that would be uh, available in the Australia region, but we'll see how that comes along. So that's kind of some of the general ones I just wanted to pick up that weren't particularly integration services type ones. Now I want to talk about Logic Apps. And I know um, even the developers that I work with on a daily basis um, weren't real thrilled on Logic Apps because you had to go to the portal. You could, eat, you could develop in Visual Studio. You could develop in VS Code. But you still, to test and debug and things like that, you had to go and run it in the portal. What they've done, and it's in preview at the moment, is they've moved that Logic App um, engine to run in the same runtime as the Azure Functions. So now you can have that run locally, and you can debug it, and you can build in VS Code at the moment. They've got the extension for VS Code. Um, so basically, um, they can you can do that um, and run that locally in debug. The other piece that that gives us is, is that you can now run them in an app service plan with your functions. So all of the pieces that come with that, it's not in that logic app runtime, which is um, kind of a shared runtime. So you can run them in your the functions. You can run them in AKS or Kubernetes. You can run them in Docker pretty much anywhere you want to, because basically they now will run in the functions runtime, a functions runtime will run pretty much anywhere, containerized, any of those things. So you can also now also deploy multiple workflows into a single logic app. So, and it looks very similar if you've seen the, I was trying to get some screenshots, but I couldn't get the, to look exactly like the way I wanted the screenshots that I've seen. Um, but basically, it allows you to do things like when you go to a function app in the Azure portal, you can see the function, click on the functions, and it'll give you a list of all the functions there. Work, it's going to have workflows, and it's going to be similar. So you're going to see the multiple um, logic apps in there. 
um, and you're going to be able to leverage the features like the private endpoints, um, easier connectivity to VNet, things like that. It's going to come with a VS Code extension. Uh, they are working on a Visual Studio extension too. Again, uh, local development, and this is what a lot of people have um, shied away for logic, from Logic Apps a bit. Uh, and but now you'll have that in there. And um, I've got a link here. I'll put these slides up on the the Meetup site too when we're done. Uh, this is to the um, telling a bit more about this in detail. Um, the other thing um, they've done is that because they've got it into VS Code, um, it's much easier to do CI, CD, things like that. They've also, at the same time, introduced a new designer. So basically, they got a lot of feedback from people that the designer was hard to use when you got large logic apps. So what they've done is they've reduced the size of the um, shapes and they've also uh, kind of done it to where the configuration of each shape is comes out from the right side of the design surface uh, and doesn't kind of just hover in the middle of the design surface the way it did. Again, um, with the 20 minutes I've got tonight, I'm not going to be able to do a lot of demos or probably anything. I am also going to cover a lot of these in a little bit more detail and with demos at the integration down under webcast on Thursday night. And I'll put up a um, link to that, but it's www.integrationdownunder.com. You can go register for that. The other thing they've done at the same time also is they've designed some stateless workflows. So now you have a choice of uh, picking a stateful or a stateless workflow. Um, and what that means is that in the existing logic apps, as you go through it, it will show you how it's gone through and, and basically look at what's come in and come out from each one of the shapes. What they're doing is to increase the performance. They've gone stateless and basically you lose some of that um, state information that it's been keeping. But again, um, from my BizTalk days, everybody was looking for trying to get it faster and faster. So again, that's what they've done. The other thing is, is I don't, a lot of people might be aware they did away with some of the Azure automation stuff a little while ago. Um, and now what they've done is they're bringing it back, but it's designed on top of logic apps. So what happens is you can go to a storage account uh, and you can go to a website, things like that. There's certain tasks that you might want to do in that um, other Azure um, service. And what it'll do is you give it a few parameters and it spins up a logic app in the background to, to do that automation. So logic apps has got a nice thing about timer, being able to fire on a timer. Um, and the thing is, you can also grab what it's created for you in terms of a logic app, but if you're not interested in the logic app at all, you don't even have to look at it. You don't see the logic app. That's the way the automations are running in the background. Again, that's why um, they've done it this way, um, but you can take what they've created and enhance it and extend it if you want to. Now we'll move on a little bit to um, API management. And one of the things that if you've ever built any policies in API management, debugging them was an extreme pain because basically there was no way to debug them. So what they've done now is they've opened it up in the developer tier in VS Code extension, and you can debug and set breakpoints and be able to look at what's happening in your uh, API management policy as it runs. The other thing they've added to API management is support for Dapper applications. So then it's done via some new um, API management policies around invocation um, and the um, dispatching of publishing and, and of messages. And again, um, I will put these out there. There's some good information on that in a short talk. It's really hard to cover very deep into these, but this is uh, gives you an idea 
of what they've done on that. And this is one of the requests that they've had for a while. Now, a little bit on Azure Functions. So the first one, if you're familiar at all with Logic Apps, one of the big features of Logic Apps has always been all of those connectors they have. So they've got Twitter, they got Dropbox, they got pretty much any of the Microsoft services. So Office 365, all of those guys, um, CRM, uh, Salesforce, there's a whole plethora of connectors. So what they decided is they're going to set up the connectors as a service. Because if you were familiar with, um, I call it Flow, but it's now Power Automate, um, it used the same connectors as the Logic Apps. So they built the connectors independent of both Power Automate and the Logic Apps. So now they're going to put them out there as kind of a connection as a service. Um, so basically, you can use these connectors in your functions. You have access to hundreds of the pre-built ones. They're starting out in the private preview with most with some of the Microsoft ones. Um, it and it is free in the private preview, um, but again, they're going to throttle if you if you abuse it too much. So the um, link to the private previews are at the bottom of that that screen there. So basically, the AKA MS. API Connect um, preview. Um, they should be going, I think, live fairly soon with the public preview of this. So um, they're just waiting to get a few things in place for that. A few other announcements they've had just recently on the functions is Blazor support for static web apps in the functions. And then .NET and Python function support for static apps, uh, web apps. Um, they also, if you were using Service Bus a lot in your functions, you might have noticed it when it was doing a scale down of your function. So like you'd, you'd scaled up to a lot of instances because you had a lot of traffic. As it was scaling down, there was sometimes some issues about it um, pulling a message off the queue, but then saying it's in shutdown, so put it back on the queue. Um, so they're doing, they've done a lot of work in that um, draining work, the way the uh, functions are, are actually going away. Um, so that you should have a better response and shouldn't, it shouldn't have to retry messages. Now, one of the things that's coming soon, and again, um, this is from the, um, the Functions Monthly Webcast. If you go out there on YouTube, there they do the, the Functions group do a, um, uh, a monthly webcast. So does the Logic Apps group. They do a Logic Apps Live. Um, and this one uh, really uh, was interesting because basically what they've done is they're building the ability to use OpenAPI Swagger to generate your functions. So if you have the swagger for what you want this function to do, you can basically generate the project uh, to get started with your functions from that open API swagger. And I uh, was looking at that and going, hmm, that uh, may make it a lot interesting, at least to get started on a lot of projects, um, because basically um, a lot of times, um, in the projects that I've worked on, we've started from here's what we know it needs to do based on an open API spec, and let's build the functions from there. So again, uh, go out and sign up for the preview for the API Connect. Um, and they've got a demo, I think they've got a demo that uses Office 365, and they've got a demo that uses the Twitter connector out there that you can watch on their YouTube channel. Now to one of my favorite topics, BizTalk. So it's been rumored to be going away now for better part of 10 years, but it's still hanging around. They did do a 2020 release not long ago. But what they have done is they are building a BizTalk migration toolkit. 
and basically will turn your BizTalk applications into an Azure integration services solution. Um, so basically it's designed to read in the BizTalk MSI files, builds a model of the application, and it could you can read in multiple. So if you've got dependent applications in BizTalk, um, you can read them all in at once. It'll create a model of that. It then creates a directory full of ARM templates and PowerShell and things like that to go out and then deploy into your Azure subscription. Um, I have run into a couple of issues because I've got a hold of a, of a little bit of a private preview of it. Um, it works good in, in the East and West US regions, but when you put Austra Southeast Australia region in there, um, it blows out some of the deployment names. So there was some issues with that in the, um, in the private preview. There will be a public preview soon. Um, I was pinging them today and asking, and they said that they've, they're a little bit delayed. But what they're going to do, and this is going to be the interesting piece, is they're going to open source this on GitHub. So you're going to be able to, if you've got some very particular things that you're doing in your BizTalk applications, so like a lot of my customers with BizTalk have custom pipelines, so you'll be able to go in there and be able to build some custom code that will generate the pieces that you want to generate for those custom pipelines. Here's a little bit more details about it. So basically it parses the MSI files, builds a model of all the artifacts, and also generates a uh, complete um, a report on what it's done. Currently, it only supports the file, FTP, and HTTP adapters. It supports the following pipelines, so the XML receive, XML transmit, pass through, um, and then it does property promotion and demotion and mapping on the send and receive ports. It's got some pipeline components around XML, JSON, and the biggest one is that I think people will get an advantage out of is that flat file decoder because the flat file decoder that's in BizTalk is about the best one I've touched. And I touched lots of different flat file decoders over my career in um, integration. Um, it also handles orchestrations, variables, port, port types, receive and send shapes, construct and transform shapes. If it doesn't know what to do with the shape, it will leave a placeholder there in the logic app that it generates for you to fill in. <coughs> so, and it provides a set of common services and logic apps, and these can be used even if you're not converting a BizTalk app. If you see something in there that you can use, you'll be able to use it. Time-wise, I think I'm not going to be able to do much of a demo. Uh, let me just see if I can find, I did run, I've run the, um, application a couple of times on my machine. Let me see if I can uh, find the um, one of the, the report at least so that we can have a look at what the report looks like. Um, and let me bring this over. There's a little sample application. So basically uh, it's a MSI that comes in there and basically it shows you that it's created some, um, looked at some receive locations, some receive ports and some send ports. Uh, it's basically looked at, built some pieces around the message bus using both API management and service bus. And it's got some logic apps um, and then it goes through and it basically, this is the little sample app they shipped with it kind of as a demo piece. So it's able to do everything in there. Otherwise it would highlight the pieces that it, um, it, it, it hasn't been able to do. And again, um, just there's, um, they're going to enhance this a little bit too. So this is a little bit of what you would get in that. So that's um, a really good thing. Um, and again, this is not going to be the end-all 
to converting your BizTalk applications. You're still going to have to do some work. So, but it'll be a good start.